What Stan did, which is really great as a writer, is that he wrote, he reflected the world around him. And he grew up in New York City and he would see people of color all around you. Growing up as an African-American, um, I just really appreciated seeing him represent people of color when he didn't have to and when a lot of other people weren't. Usually when you look back at the older, uh, the older works, uh, the older um, comic books, yeah, there are chock full of racial stereotypes. Once again, that comes from people writing about something that they don't know about. That's what I was saying. She is ready to tackle that aspect of the art. Luke Cage was a character that, you know, growing up reading comics in the 70s and in the 80s, I kind of took Luke Cage seriously. You're like, okay, he was this big, tall, muscular black guy with a fro, uh, a metal tiara, blue spandex, and he walked around knocking people out saying, sweet Christmas. And I kind of believed that when I was younger. When, as I got a little older, I'm like, wait, wait, what? I don't, I don't know anybody who talks or acts like this. Um, but as time progresses and as things become more balanced, then people start becoming more aware of where they might have went left with representation. Right. Yeah, people would absolutely buy it. Yeah. You're talking about the 60s when all this was happening. There was a lot of social issues being just blown in your face. The media was all about it. Stan was a showman. Stan was P.T. Barnum in comics. So ultimately, I think he went, hmm, this is going to grab attention. This is going to light up. The, and he went for it. Punisher, Rocket Raccoon, Devil Dinosaur. Green Lantern. Yeah, Black with Panther. Huckleberry Hound. Yeah, yeah. It was easy for him collaborating with other artists like you know Jack Kirby and so forth. But also it was easier for, for people to come in with an idea about a character who was not white, blonde haired, blue eyes, and stay well, okay, what, what what do we do now? What, what what's what's the story? What's the idea? And they would spitball things. And that was Stan's energy. If you could get him Excited about it, he would run with it and, and damn the torpedoes, sort of thing. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Um. And I knew there were some people in the company who really wanted to maintain a certain what they were used to status quo. Stan kept, you know, opening doors. So again, whether he did it for purely social commentary reasons or to be a good guy, to be a hero himself, to, to be the leader of a movement, I don't know. But what you look at is what he enabled to occur. So we'd have to do research, but there were black comic strip characters. A lot of the, the norms were changing by the time I hit my teen years. And yeah, to start to see Luke Cage, Black Panther, Gabe, these characters there Whoa! Is that Iron Heart? Iron Heart, she's new. That's a new character. New she's character. Like replacing Ironheart. Iron Man. People want to see themselves represented in their mythology. They want to enjoy that. <clears throat> Pardon me. They want to enjoy that, and they want to know that the fantasies about what I'd love to be able to do, or what my kids, you know, would like to be able to do, is represented out there in the world. A black woman comic book, like starring her, her own comic, that would have never well, happened years ago. They did. We're we're saying goodbye to somebody who, as far as we're concerned, had a major, major impact on our lives and on the industry. And so, whatever his motives were, he done good. And worked at DC. He did a little stunt at DC. Oh. Well, you don't even realize. No, I did. You could not have done this then. Mm -mm. The fact that they went back to this.